Good morning, 93.5 listeners. Good morning, Facebook viewers. Guess what? It is July. Can you believe it? July 1st, 2020. More than halfway through the year that will be known as the Flaming Dumpster Fire. My name is Adam Handler. I am an attorney. I am the partner of the personal injury department here at Pollock Pollock Isaac DeSico. And you now are officially cruising with the case handler. We are a law firm here in downtown Manhattan, 225 Broadway on the third floor, a full service law firm here to provide you every single service that you possibly would need if God forbid you ever need a really, really good attorney. When I say God forbid, I mean that, uh, you know, we're here when disaster strikes, uh, whether it's personal injury, criminal defense, matrimonial, but we're also here for good things too. Uh, immigration, you want to change your status here in the United States, uh, legalize your status and change your life and your family's life for generations to come. You give us a call. Uh, you're buying a house, you're selling a house, you need a will, uh, you need to set up a, a trust or uh, work on an estate. You give us a call. Our phone number is 844-774-3529. Again, 844-774-3529 or 844-PPID-LAW. We are practicing attorneys with nearly 100 years combined experience on this panel alone. And when I say this panel, who is on this panel today? Well, Nelson, the Maverick Madrid, a partner of mine in the immigration uh, practice. He was actually in the office yesterday for the first time since the pandemic hit, uh, watering his dead plants and getting his files together. Conrad, the maestro Pollock, the managing partner of the firm, the son of the founding attorney of this firm. Uh, and of course, wait a minute, I don't get it. Today's Wednesday. It's not Thursday, but nevertheless, the general, Alan Kay, is here with us. The most experienced, the most respected, the most well-known immigration attorney within 500 miles of New York City. Here to let you know what's going on with immigration in general. Here to answer immigration questions along with the Maverick and the Maestro. And I may even let my co-host, David Squeeze talk today. I usually hey. try to, to hey. limit him as much as possible. But you know what? Today, I'm feeling generous. And I actually want to know, David, what is up, my brother? Everything is up. It's uh, July. It what is July. It? It's July. You said that. You know, it's, uh, it's, I, I can't believe we're more than halfway through the year. Um, I don't even know where the year went. Um, I look like a hermit. I need a haircut. I need many things. I need grooming. I can't even believe I'm doing a show looking like this. I mean, I look it's horrible. But hey, guess what? I'm alive. And that's what really matters. And I'm here with you and some phenomenal attorneys. And we are here to help a lot of people when it comes to personal injury and immigration. So we're going to jump right into it, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Adam already um, introduced the panel, great panel. Everyone is looking very dapper this morning. I see the general is here. He's ready to actually uh, make sure everybody understand what's going on with immigration and more. Um, I see Nelson looked all slick back and everything. Okay, got his white shirt on. Is that a white shirt? I got I to gotta step up my game. The general is on. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I keep forgetting. We really have to step it up. And speaking of the general, you know what? I tell you what, 93.5 FM listeners and Facebook viewers, we have the, you know, people don't like to use the word best and the attorneys cannot use it. But we as listeners, viewers, and myself as a broadcaster can tell you, you know, I am with the best panel here yet since I've been doing this when it comes to any kind of talking law. And this is not BS. This is the truth. And I'm very thankful that I have them on my radio show. You know, it's an honor to actually have them on my radio show to give information. Okay, we've got a man who has settled with over $120 million for his clients when it comes to personal injury. That's the case handler, AKA the shark. Adam Handler is his real name. We've got the maestro Conrad Pollock. Okay, a man of many talents. Okay, uh, managing partner of the firm. We've got the Nelson Madrid, AKA the maverick who fly by his own rules, as Adam would say, when it comes to making sure, of course, within the law, 
making sure that he handles your immigration benefits. And then we've got the general, as I mentioned earlier, the man with the links, them, as we would say in Jamaica, the man with the connections, the man who, you know, makes sure that he goes very, very aggressively to ensure that he finds out what's going on with your case or assists with your case. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Cruising with the Case Handler, 8.30 a.m. weekdays. And with that said, I'm gonna turn it over to the general to find out what's happening in the immigration land, the immigration world, in this world that is stricken with so much now when it comes to, of course, immigration. Mr. Alan E.K., how are you doing today? I'm good, thank you. Let me give everybody listening uh, some updates on what's going on. We've talked about furloughs where people will stop working and immigration, the USCIS is gonna start furloughs uh, on um, August 3rd, and this will run for at least 30 days and could go up for 90 days, meaning that 75% of USCIS will shut down. Obviously that's gonna affect your immigration cases if they're going through USCIS. 13,000 federal employees will stop working unless USCIS gets emergency funding. USCIS has asked for $1.2 billion in emergency funding from Congress. If they get it, maybe they won't be furloughs, but if they may not get it, it may come later, but starting August 3rd, furloughs, not a good thing. At the same time, USCIS is pushing for fee increases. And we've been talking about <clears throat> fee increases and we've been warning people to try to file as soon as possible because a lot of your fees, including naturalization, are gonna go up substantially. So while they're trying to get more money from Congress, while they're gonna be shutting down 70% of their workforce starting on August 3rd, unless they get the money, at the same time, they're pushing hard to get their fee increases up uh, but that's not really going to help with furloughs and, and they need money from Congress. So this is some of the latest things that are going on and immigration, the USCIS is opening up. People are being, being called in for interviews. They're starting with naturalization ceremonies, swearing in, and then they're going <clears> to <throat> follow up with naturalization interviews and they're hoping the naturalization stuff will be finished by July. But with the furloughs, that might not happen. Things are going to get very slow if 70% of their workforce is not working. So that's some of my updates and let's see if my colleagues would like, would like to add to that. <clears throat> okay, Conrad? Yes, what I like to add. Um, well, there's a bit of a controversy going on right now in terms of whether Congress will uh, give that 1.2 billion that the CIS is requesting. And with good reason, um, the CIS, uh, budget shortfall is totally their fault. Uh, they like to blame the pandemic uh, because the pandemic apparently has resulted in about half of their uh, filings uh, not being filed. In other words, um, filings are down about 50% since the pandemic. Um, and so immigration is of course blaming that uh, for, the, for, for the reason that they're not making money because CIS is funded entirely by user fees, by the application fees that we all pay. Um, of course, they don't mention the fact that they, they're crazy, extreme vetting uh, of all applications of scheduling an interview for every single type of case that comes through their doors, regardless whether it's necessary or not, making every type of application subject to extreme scrutiny, which is absurd, uh, including um, petitions that have previously been filed. If you're filing an extension of a visa application, you want to file an H-1. And you, you, you did it two or three times previously, and you're filing an extension now for the third, fourth time, whatever, they don't pay any credence to the fact that the application has been filed and approved previously. They're adjudicating it as if it were a brand new application. So in other words, they're going back through everything that they've already adjudicated, possibly once, twice, three times already, to make sure that it was approved correctly the first time. They're doing that with everything. So obviously that takes more time, takes more manpower, takes more people. Um, so, and well, let me not forget also the increase in personnel. They've added, I don't know, 3,000 people. The uh, 
and Alan, correct me if I'm wrong. I think there are 18,000 employees USCIS these days. That's about um, yeah. Which in the past, since 9/11, I, I think I think they, the USCIS has more than doubled its its manpower since 9/11. Um, but anyway, uh, they've added 3,000 staff members specifically to man these what they've these anti-fraud units that they've created. Even though there is no evidence, there is no basis that anyone is aware of other than the administration as to there being fraud, that they need an anti-fraud agency or anti-fraud section to uh, combat this alleged fraud, similar to what the administration did with and what they're still claiming about voting, that there's so much voting fraud out there. And if you remember back when Trump first started uh, three and a half years ago, they created this anti-fraud uh, agency to 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 eliminate voter fraud, which of course didn't exist. And that agency disbanded six months later. That agency luckily was subject to a lot of scrutiny. Unfortunately, the immigration service and these anti-fraud sections that they've created are not subject to that much scrutiny, even though they're totally unnecessary. But there you go. There are 3,000 additional people working there. So for all of these reasons, immigration is running out of money. Um, and Congress, to their credit, is a little bit skeptical about the fact that, uh, that why do they need $1.2 billion all of a sudden? Not to mention also, of course, when Trump took, took office, the, uh, there was a surplus when the USAS, uh, in terms of USAS funds. So for all these reasons, they're out of money. Congress is skeptical about giving, skeptical about giving, to the, giving it to them. Hopefully, they will fund the agency, but with conditions to make sure that, they, that CIS is accountable for the money. That's the argument right now. So we'll see. We'll see. And um, Nelson? I, I, have, I have a different take. Um, if immigration were competent and efficient, I'd be unemployed. I'm very busy. So <laughs> kudos to immigration. Keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> I've got job security as a result of their inefficiency. That's what I'm talking about. Once again, you just heard from the attorneys on the immigration side. OK. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, we want to say, um, if you're out there and you're listening to the attorneys speak on immigration as to what is happening with immigration in the United States, and you're out of status, or you know someone who need immigration benefits, it is now time to make a phone call over to the firm. The name of the firm is Pollock, Pollock, Isaac, and DeSico. We say PPID. I have three immigration attorneys right now that is willing to speak with you. Now, you may call the number I'm about to give, you can set up a consultation with them and speak with them. Now, here's the good part. The good part is that you will not be charged anything. It's 100% free for the consultation, the phone consultation. So I say to you, ladies and gentlemen, pick up the phone and call this number. The number is 844-774-3529. Everyone that's watching us on Facebook, everyone that's tuned into 93.5 WVIP-FM, we have made it possible for every one of you to get a free phone consultation with an attorney at PPID. Absolutely free, off the air, privately, confidentially, but you gotta call now. Try and call before the top of the hour. Here is the number to call to get your free US immigration phone consultation. 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. 344-P-P-I-D-L-A-W. That's 844-774-3529. With that, Please, if I could, um, yeah. I'm sorry, if I, could, if I could just jump in, I just wanted to throw something out there. You know, uh, and we were told, we had our uh, daily department meeting yesterday, the immigration department at the firm, and we're all talking about the various bans and immigration running out of money and uh, you know, which, by the way, there is a, a school of thought that believes the administration is deliberately uh, running out of money. So that way they can just grind immigration in general to a halt, um, which, of course, is Trump and, well, I should say more Stephen Miller, who's this immigration guy, is, is czar. Uh, some people think that's their plan all along, and deliberately run out of money so immigration stops working. Um, anyway, besides that, uh, with all of these bans, with all of this bad news, immigration running out of money, not processing cases. You know, the, the, the natural tendency, I think, of, of some people would be, you know what, let me wait, let me sit back, 
let me not do anything until the smoke clears. Maybe if Trump is not reelected and Biden gets in, things will loosen up. And we all hope that's the case, of course. Um, but I, I subscribe to a different uh, thought process. I think now, especially with the fees going up very soon, now is the time to file. Um, you know, you're at, you might file the application today. You might, if, if immigration goes out of business for a couple of months, you might not see a filing receipt for a couple of months. But you know what? You get your application in now. You're going to get ahead of the crowd that's going to file when things change. When, but if, if and when Biden gets in, and God, you know, pray, pray to God if he, that he gets in, um, immigration is going to go crazy. Everyone's going to start filing their cases. Uh, you know, things are you know, going to loosen up, hopefully. If political asylum come back, and, you know, there'll be some semblance of normalcy, hopefully, over time. It is not a good idea, in my opinion, to uh, wait. You should file your cases now for all of these reasons, because when the gates open up again, there's going to be a massive influx. And this has happened before uh, in, in various situations over the years. And I've been doing this for 30 something years. Uh, granted, not as long as the 50, 60, 70 years that Alan has been doing this. And I've been doing it a long time. But um, file now. Don't wait. Some of these cases take 5, 10, 15 years to process. 10 years from now, hopefully all of what's going on in 2020 will be a long distant memory, just a very unpleasant memory. So do not wait. File your cases now. There are a million reasons to do so really none not to do so at this point. File your cases. If you're ready, if you've been sitting on the sidelines, get your application in, because if you don't, you're going to regret it. That, and that's what, that is our firm policy, by the way. I set it out yesterday as I'm setting out today. Everyone in our department is aware, and everyone pretty much agrees that this is the way to go. It is to everyone's benefit to get your applications in as soon as possible. Absolutely. And it is something that we say, um, ladies and gentlemen, um, every time that file something, you know, okay? Because those who are in the system are more likely to get benefits quicker than those who aren't in the system. It's very, very important, right? And also, if and when they take away benefits, those who are probably, who are in the system will probably probably be grandfathered in. So it's, it's extremely important that if you're out there, you don't sit on your box side. Adam, what's a box side? A you know, butt, a tuchus. Okay, all right, all right. <laughs> you don't sit on your backside and don't do anything. Do something. Get up off your backside, okay, and uh, get something filed. I mean, come on. I mean, these guys, you know, sometimes I, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting, I mean, alone and meditating. I'm like, these guys are out of their mind. They are actually giving free consultation. What are they doing? Try to put themselves oh, listen, up. Listen, you, 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 you know, know the theory behind that, Squeeze. We, you know. we were... You know, we were all here, um, you know, during the when the pandemic first hit, and we wanted to figure out the best possible way for us to give back to the community that's embraced us over these years. And Conrad and I got together and Nelson as well. And we said, you know, how do we expand, um, you know, uh, our market? How do we expand into people that really do need an alternative when it comes to great attorneys, practicing attorneys in a full service law firm. And we figured what better way than to make the formal introduction uh, than uh, to give free consultations out. You know, I've been doing personal injury, working uh, with the Caribbean community for over 15 years. And you and I, Squeeze, we've been doing this show for going on, yes. you know, eventually we're going on our second decade or we, on our, we are on our second decade of yep. broadcasting to this community. And it was really important to us. And you know what? Uh, I, I give you the credit as well because you know you really kind of set us in the path as to how um, the best uh, approach would be uh, to, to make sure that the people out there know, you know, really the quality firm we are, and the quality of attorneys we are, and the kind of guys we are just in general. So cruising with the case handler has always been a great platform like I said, to give back to the community that has really shown us nothing but love, support, and dedication throughout the years. And if we can keep doing it, uh, we're more than happy to do it because we know that once you hear what we have to say, uh, regardless of the area of law um, that you're inquiring of, uh, once you hear what we have to say, we are confident that you're gonna retain us and make us your attorneys and allow us to treat you like family, not just a file. But you must have that number saved. It's, it's truly, ladies and gentlemen, listening at 
the most important message we can give out during this show is our phone number. The Facebook viewers can direct message us, the Instagram followers can direct message us or email us or send us uh, text messages or emails. But the 93.5 viewers, you know, really must have this number saved. And if I can ask everybody right now to dial it, let it ring for 10 seconds and then save it in your phone later on when you can safely do so, I would be extremely appreciative. And you're gonna be doing nothing than bettering your life and your family's life. You may not need us today. Hopefully you'll never need us, but God forbid you do. And you need to figure out the best possible representation for your particular legal need. It's one last thing to think about because it's already gonna be in your phone. Our phone number is 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529 or 844-PPID-LAW. Uh, the phones are, are, are ringing right now. They're, they've been ringing every day, every hour, literally hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of people have been getting their immigration questions answered for free. And it's been, you know, simple questions like, uh, I was told uh, I would like a personal, uh, a, 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 a person to person consultation. I was told to call your law firm if I need help with immigration. Or somebody else this morning sent us a message saying, I've been here in the United States since 2004 and would like to know what my options are. I'd be satisfied with a work permit. I mean, these are basic questions that people have that we can answer really, really uh, easily uh, and quickly because the attorneys answering these questions have been doing it for decades and decades and decades. But again, unless you call us, we won't know you exist, right? Personal injury. We don't roll up at the scene of the accident. We don't see you at the emergency room. Doctors aren't giving you our business card. You must have our number saved for when disaster strikes. Immigration, we're not hanging out in Federal Plaza. We're not um, you know, outside uh, immigration offices with flyers saying, do you need us to be your attorney? You got to come to us first. We're happy to help you, but you got to make that call. You got to make, take that first step to better your life and better your family's life. And that number is 844-774-3529 or 844-PPID-LAW. Does the handler get to play today? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it, Adam Handler. My co-pilot. So you have heard, uh, you have heard what's going on. This is cruising with a case handler, um, where we speak on immigration, and you just heard the case handler himself speak on personal injury. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a great panel, and he noted that everyone needs to have the number. Very, very important. Many of you, you want to speak with an immigration attorney for free. Okay, the consultation on the phone is free. Call where me. where else are you getting that? You know, anybody out there? Nobody has called me and said, "Oh yeah, we have better alternatives than a free consultation." There is none. There, there is none. There is none. And you know, there may be lawyers out there that are really desperate for work that could be offering free consultations, but they're doing it for the wrong reasons. They're doing it because nobody else is calling them. Trust me, <laughs> free consultations is pretty much the last thing our firm needs to be doing right now. But we're doing it because Absolutely. we truly want to give back to the community that has looked to us for decades for quality, top-notch legal service, right? So if you, you know, there's an expression, you get what you pay for, except in this particular case, because a free consultation could be some of the best 10, 15, 20 minutes that you have ever had exploring your particular legal issue. You may hear things that nobody else has ever said to you before in your life. You may be given bad news, right? If, you, if there's something that we can't help you with or something detrimental to your case, we're going to tell you. There's no reason not to. But we could also be telling you things that you've never heard before in a good way. Oh, my God, I can file this way. Oh, my God, I can adjust this way. Oh, my God, I can, um, I can uh, petition for this particular, uh, for this, I, I don't really know immigration too much, but I can petition in, in this particular way. Things that maybe other attorneys haven't advised you before because they haven't really been thinking outside the box. You have the most experienced and respected immigra immigration attorneys within hundreds of miles of New York City 
here, ready, willing, and able to answer your questions 100% free. But like I keep saying over and over again, if you want to be connected to really, really, really good attorneys, you must have that number. And that's 844-PPID-LAW, 844-PPID-LAW or 844-774-3529. And once again, ladies and gentlemen, let me ask you something, Nelson, okay? You have heard this man speak, Adam Handler, the shark, and you have been working with him for years. Do you know of any other attorney that's like him when it comes to personal injury? He just spoke on immigration in detail, but do you know of anyone else like Adam Handler? The fact that you've also worked on cases with him where people are out of status and they get hurt? I let you take us to the top of the hour. You got a, a Adam. Adam is definitely very passionate about what he does, um, not just personal injury. When it comes to dealing with his clients, um, anytime Adam has walked a client over to the immigration department, Adam makes sure to personally see that that client is taken care of and whatever it is that client needs is done. Um, so you know, I have the utmost respect for Adam and his team and what they do. And um, again, passion is not something that you can buy. Passion is not something that's easily found. Um, either you're passionate or you're not. And Adam is that passionate guy. Absolutely. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, we've got two, th two teams here today, immigration and personal injury. You hear them speaking about each other. They cross paths from time to time because there are many people in the United States who do not know. God forbid you get hurt. You have the personal injury department. If you're out of status, you've got the immigration department, two different departments at PPID. Ladies and gentlemen, store the number 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, we are continuing the show on Facebook. I want to say a pleasant good morning to all the people on Facebook, the Carolyn Anderson Tiger, um, the uh, Linda Shaw's, they're all sharing the page. And we need for you, if you are listening to us on 93.5 <clears> of <throat> them, go to my page, David Squeeze Anarchy, Adam's page, the Case Handler, PPID's page, ladies and gentlemen, and follow us. Share the page with other others um, out there who need the information. Once again, call the number 844-774-3529. Call that number. You will get a free phone consultation with one of the attorneys. And once again, God forbid you get, you get hurt in an accident, do not go to any other attorney. No. You're talking about 15 solid years on this station. Adam Handler will assist, ladies and gentlemen. Call him, 844-774-3529. Call PPID, 844-774-3529. Let's go to the top. nine o'clock. All right, gentlemen, great show so far, okay? And we are going to be jumping into the questions right now. But uh, once again, for all the people on Facebook, as we get that bell going again, for all the people on Facebook, could you do us a favor? Can you share on, on at least 10 individuals' timelines? And also, if you're a part of groups, um, do us a favor and share the link in those groups so people can hear the wonderful attorneys that we have here on the show this beautiful day, all right? Uh, I don't know, for, for some reason, I'm thinking that today's Thursday. I wonder if anyone knows why that is. Today's not Thursday, right? Because Alan Kay is usually on Thursday instead of Wednesday. Exactly. And I'm like, man. I'll be back next Thursday. Okay. All right. No problem. All right. So here's a question coming to you um, from yesterday's show that wasn't answered. I'm a citizen. I filed an I-130 for my parents for a green card on April 6th, and mom got approved on April 26th. But my father's case is still pending. I did on the same time, but father case got stopped. I wanted to make case on NVC together. So together at the interview time. Once again, gentlemen, I read. I, I get it. I get it. I see what he's trying. He wants to keep the two cases together for both his parents. So they all go on there. So they both go on their interviews together when the time comes at the consulate. Uh, sometimes the files get separated, even though you submitted the petitions together. Uh, sometimes immigration separates them. And it, sometimes it takes just takes longer for one to get approved than the other, even though they might be identical applications. The fact that he got approvals within a month is great. It's an, it's an indication that um, immigration doesn't have a lot of work to do, that their examiners are not as busy as they usually are. That's good. I don't know that that's going to be continuing, but that's a good thing. You should consider him lucky. 
Usually a case like that will take six, eight months to get approved. So I would just wait. Don't do anything on the one petition that got approved, even though they might hear from the NBC, hold off on sending them the fees, wait until you hear on the approval for the other, the other parent. And once that's approved and that's gets, that gets sent to the NBC, then you file them both together with the NBC. That's what I would do. <laughs> We're assuming that the parents came here legally and that they will, they will be able to adjust their status here and not well, have to pay. Well, Alan, if they're filing for adjustment, then they wouldn't have to do any of that. My <laughs> guess is they, they wouldn't even be at the NBC if they're adjusting. Well, it's just pending. The question is whether well, we're assuming that they came legally and they can adjust here. I'm just saying if they didn't, they wouldn't be able to adjust here. All right. Well, all right. Couple, two issues. Number one, assuming they're not in the U.S., which is my assumption that they're waiting in, 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 at, for their interviews at the U.S. consulate. Number one, they're subject to the ban. Uh, travel ban includes parents of U.S. citizens. So you file that case. It doesn't matter when it gets approved. Uh, as long as this travel ban is in place, you're going to be waiting for them to get interviews. Look, hopefully the travel ban is up by the end of this year and, and, it's, and it becomes history, bad history, unfortunate history. But um, as of now, they're subject to the travel ban if they're outside the United States. On the other hand, if the parents are in the United States, they should be filing for adjustment of status. They should have filed an I-130 as well as all the other forms to file for adjustment of status. The case wouldn't need to go to the National Visa Center and you wouldn't need to wait for the approvals of the I-130. You just file your case, file all the proper application forms and wait for your interview and your work authorization. Um, so if that's the case, this person has mismanaged his case and needs to call a lawyer. And I happen to know a couple of good ones. <laughs> I think we all do. Once again, call one of them at 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. Okay, we're on immigration. In a few, we'll be switching it over to personal injury with the case handler himself, Adam Handler. Let's um, remind everyone here, please share the page. Okay, it's the best compliment that you can do for us. Okay, share the page with someone who needs to actually see it. Good morning, Raquel Stone. Thank you so much for what you're doing by sharing the page, you and the rest of the family here. Let's go to another question here. It says here from Raquel, good morning, guys. I'm married to a U.S. citizen, and I'm hoping to travel to the U.S. in November 2020 on my B1, B2. My priority date is January 22nd, 2020, SC, Nebraska. Is it possible to do an AOS, and would you recommend, or should I just wait? <clears throat> there are a couple of, a couple, of problem, a couple of problems there. First of all, if you're coming to visit, but you have a petition pending for you, you could have a problem at the airport. Customs and Border Protection may ask questions. If they realize a, a petition is filed, you're an intending immigrant, they could give you a hard time coming in as a visitor. That's one problem to keep in mind. And also, if they ask you, do not lie about it. All right? Tell them the truth. Don't forget. Always tell the truth. Now, the second, what, happens, what happens if you lie? They'll need a waiver if they get if she gets if, they, if she says oh I don't know what you're talking about I never filed my green card and they say well here's the petition ma'am they could deny her entry deny her entry number one and more important than that when she does go for a final interview wherever that may be uh, she'll need a waiver they'll deny her for misrepresentation fraud she would need a waiver or slow things down cost a lot more money just don't lie there's no benefit to lying in that situation none and the second problem is that she comes in as a visitor they allow her to come in no problem but then she decides she wants to get the visa here and she files for adjustment of status. If she does that too quickly, like a day later, a week later, a month later, at, that could hit her in the face at the interview at USCIS. You said you were coming to visit and now all of a sudden you change your mind and you're gonna be filing to get the visa here, what happened? So that's something else that you have, should be talking to one of our lawyers about what the best thing to do if you came in as a visitor and they let you in and now you decide you want to get the visa here. And, and that's pretty much the same. It's a similar circumstance that I was just saying about the waiver. Um, if they do let her in and then they, at the interview, they say, wait a minute, like Alan said, oh, well, you said you were coming as a visitor and now you're applying for your green card a week later. You lied. You blatantly lied. That would be a mistake because, again, they could deny your case. You'll need a waiver, slow things down, cost a lot more money. The proper remedy there is to wait. You need to, if, if, if that's the circumstance, you need to call us and we need to talk about it in more detail. It's not something we can really go over here, but um, there are options, right? As long as you handle it properly in advance. Unfortunately, the cases we usually see like this usually is after the fact. It's usually after 
they entered with a visa and they applied for their adjustment of status a week later and now they've been denied for fraud. That's usually, right, Nelson? That's usually the scenario when we see the client coming. It says, well, yeah, I applied. I had an approved an approval and everything and then I got my work authorization and I go to the interview and they denied me. What's going on? Well, sometimes without a lawyer, you make mistakes like that. All right. Let's squeeze in one more question, then we'll go to Adam Handler on personal injury. All right. Uh, here's one here, ladies and gentlemen out there. Question. Um, it says, I applied for my I-751 form removal of condition on green card. My two years green card expired June 29, 2020. It's almost been two months, but I have not received my extension period letter. USCIS has acknowledged that they have received my files on April 24, 2020. They have attempted to send my extension letter twice, but I have not received it. They have my correct address. My post office doesn't have it. And they say that they have sent it from their side. There is no way to track these mails since they would not use FedEx. I need the extension letter for my driver's license renewal and proof of legal status for work. How can I work or drive legally without the extension? Period. All right. When you file a 751, and the 751 is an application to remove the conditional basis of a green card. Uh, she got a green card for two years based on marriage. Uh, she has to go back and apply after within the two after two years, within three months of the two-year anniversary to get her permanent card. That's what she's done. Now, when you submit the 751, you get two things. First, you get a receipt. Usually that comes in a month or two. These days, you know, who knows when it comes. Number two, you get scheduled for fingerprints, biometrics. The interview, which is likely, uh, because they interview everybody now, or the actual approval or a decision or an RFE requesting more additional evidence, takes a could take a year, but if she submitted, the, it sounds like she got something. The receipt that she got typically will extend her green card status, her permanent resident status automatically for a year. She can use that to work, to travel, and to renew her work authorization or whatever else. So she said she received something. So my guess is she received that receipt. The receipt is sufficient. She's not getting that approval for at least a year, maybe longer. And if you um, didn't get the receipt, come to us and we'll see if we can help you to get it. Right. But it sounds like she got something. And the only thing she could have gotten was the receipt. And that receipt is the extension, typically, Alan. All right. Yes, it is Wednesday, July 1. Ladies and gentlemen, we're here doing Cruising with the Case Handler, 93.5 FM. And, uh, of course, social media. Make sure you check it out each and every single day. Once again, thanks to the panel of attorneys here. And we have more to talk on. Let's flip it over to personal injury. Let's find out what the shark has to say. What the, my, shark. Let's, the case handler has to say. The man who has settled well over $120 million in accident cases for his clients. Adam Handler. Wagwan, my noobs. Wagwan King. <laughs> all right, let's, let's, let's pull this up. First of all, I got to get, uh, got to get the right background right now. I'm feeling this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good one. Um, all right. So, you know, yesterday was a was a good day. Uh, we had a couple big, big settlements, which we are very excited about. Um, you know, of course, we discussed uh, last week, we settled the case for $550,000, which was pretty exciting. Uh, yesterday, settled the case uh, against Con Edison uh, for $97,000. Uh, hasn't made testimonial Tuesday yet, but a very interesting case. I thought I'd uh, you know, show, show some pictures now that the case is settled. We never like talking about open cases just for fear that, you know, uh, maybe a juror or somebody out there is, is listening, but let's see if we can, let's see if we can pull this up for everybody right now. Um, let's see. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. All right. So what is this case about? So we represent this gentleman that was driving his vehicle in Manhattan and he's driving down the road and all of a sudden, boom, he feels a, a heavy, hard impact to the bottom of the vehicle, and uh, his knee slams into the dashboard. Uh, he gets out uh, and sees this. He sees a Con Edison uh, manhole cover uh, in this condition, standing up. Now, obviously, this manhole cover became loose uh, uh, over time and, and probably from vehicles running over it, but that is certainly something that should not happen. Now, normally speaking, whenever anybody is in some kind of accident regarding a defect in the road, you have to, uh, go after the city of New York as the city owns and maintains the streets, but the city does give licenses out to, uh, indi uh, uh, individual entities, 
uh, Con Edison, um, uh, I'm, I'm drawing blanks on a, the a cable, uh, uh, the cable companies, things like that. And they are responsible for their own hardware in the road and uh, 12 inches are around it. So even though it was in a city street, uh, we did have to file a claim against Con Edison. And uh, we were able to successfully show that this particular cover was coming loose uh, often, that people were complaining about it. And uh, finally, somebody got hurt, and that was our client. And if I could scroll down, I can show you a better picture from the next day. And this is three days later after the accident, after it was already reported um, to Con Edison. Look what they did there. I mean, it's so ridiculous. They, they just put a garbage can by it. They didn't fix it. They didn't re reset it in the street. They just put a garbage can um, next to the manhole uh, just so nobody else would get hurt or drive into it. Uh, and as if that wasn't enough, then we came back a few days later and uh, what did they do? Uh, I mean, look how crazy that is. Uh, they, they, they decided to barricade it, but still left the manhole cover off, just put a cone on it. And, you know, I mean, obviously that's a little bit better than it was before, but it literally took, I believe, about two weeks for them to properly uh, reset that grate and, and fix it. But to make a long story short, we were able to get this gentleman $97,000 yesterday for his knee injury. Uh, they wanted to pay 25000 and we started the case, and we worked it up, and lo and behold, 97500 in the midst of a pandemic. And that was also uh, on top of another case that we settled yesterday for 73500 The maximum was $75,000, and uh, we got 73500 The client did not want to wait until the end of the year to get the money. So you know, nearly uh, two, uh, nearly two hundred thousand dollars yesterday alone for case handler clients, and some of these numbers, you know, that we've obtained during the pandemic uh, are, are really, really uh, admirable. I, I'm looking at back at our body of work between myself and Matthew Goodstein. Um, again, uh, uh, some some notable settlements: hundred thousand, hundred thousand, two point five million. Uh, 197,500, 622,000, 152,000, 470,000, 100,000, 225,000, 100,000, 500,000, uh, uh, 175,000, 150,000, 100,000, 150,000, 235,000, 550,000. And of course, yesterday, 97,000 and 73,500. So your boy, the case handler, has been busy uh, these past three months. Uh, Matthew Goodstein, my associate, has been busy these past few months, and I'm just thrilled for the clients uh, that are obtaining this money, of course, tax-free, because we always say it, you got one chance to get it right. All these clients had one chance at full compensation, one chance at justice, one chance at recovery, and of course, one choice of attorney. And you know who they called, Squeeze? Case Handler. They called the Case Handler. We got to bring back that jingle, by the way. Yeah. Who what happened to, to that jingle? What happened to uh, that jingle? That jingle is there, man. We yeah. gotta, we gotta play that jingle. I, I don't know if Conrad's ever heard that jingle. I know Nelson never heard that jingle. But uh, yeah, and all kidding awesome. aside, they called the case handler, and we took care of business. But that's exactly how we do it at PPID, uh, which of course stands for Paul Paul Isaac Tosico. Um, we are all practicing attorneys. We all have our areas of law that we, we, we primarily focus on. You know, I don't mess with the immigration other than really talking about it with this show. We and, play you know. hard, we're gonna call Case Handler. They play dogs to falling for Case Handler. Instruction practice. We're gonna call practice. Look and fall, we're gonna call Case Handler. Case Handler. That's ah. the jingle right there. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Oh man, what do you can you top that, Conrad? You're on the piano. That's that's personal injury right there. That's Adam Adler. That's the shark. That's the case Adler. Can you top that? <laughs> I know I like you're it. I like it. I like it. Actually, you need an introduction. I think going forward as well. I think the voice should introduce the case. The voice. Ah. <laughs> 
Oh man, um, I don't know if Alan knows what's going on here. Alan we're... is like, what the? You know, he comes on once a week. He doesn't about. say. We are all absolutely losing our minds right now. You know, all of us. making these jokes, and but listen, we may be having fun, but the message is very clear, and and I, I can't speak to it enough. Uh, you know, we're here, we're giving out the information, we're giving out our phone number, we're, we're speaking to you guys out there for free. And like I always say, I, I hope you, you never need to call our number. I really do. Because, you know, needing a lawyer is pretty much the last thing anybody needs. It's like needing an undertaker. But things happen. Well, not quite, that's a little dramatic. But Maybe it's a little dramatic, but good. all right. But listen, <laughs> you know, nobody wants to have to need a lawyer. I mean, you want to... You know, you know what I mean. It's it's we're here when things have not gone the way they're supposed to go. But on the other hand, and you know, it's not just doom and gloom as I always accuse my uh, co-hosts with. It's positive because you know maybe there is a, is a change of circumstance that will allow you to better your life, that will allow you to better your family's life for generations to come. I mean, squeeze you immigrated here from Jamaica in what year? 1982. 1982. And think about what you have achieved yourself. You, you became, uh, you know, you legalized your status here. And think about what you have achieved for yourself and what you have achieved for your children. And now what your children are achieving and what one day, God willing, their children will achieve. I mean, it really, you know, it, it falls back it's, to your mom who, who, who came yep. here, right? Yep. And, and, and change things for the better. And the same thing for, for my grandfather who came here, uh, he was born in 1910. I'm, I'm guessing he came here, you know, between 1915 and 1917 um, and immigrated to the United States, legalized- Same for all of us. Yeah, same all, for of us. all of us. Exactly. My, my, um, my grandparents immigrated from, from uh, Eastern Europe in the 1890s. Um, same thing. My dad was born here, you know, around World War, during World War One, and uh, and you know, I am now. I guess that would make me what second generation uh, American. Um, and now my kids are here. I mean, it's the same for all of us. Just some are more recent than others, and unfortunately, some people out there, unfortunately, they're in government. Or they get in the door and then they want to shut it behind them, you know, or get climb the ladder and then pull up that ladder I so had, nobody I else had, can come, come up that ladder. I had one, I had, I was reading this article. Somebody's like, yeah, he's like, you know, my family's been here forever. You know, we're true Americans. We came on the Mayflower. Well, you still came on a boat. So unless you are indigenous to this country, right. <laughs> you're an immigrant to this country. Uh, and that's right. what I think is, is lost on, on so many people. I don't care what color you are. Unless you are American Indian, <clears throat> you are an immigrant to this country, just like everybody else that you see on yeah, the show. Also, there's the argument, well, you know, people should come the right way, you know, like through Ellis Island. You know, unfortunately, there is no right way anymore. They, 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 and <laughs> the Trump administration is pretty, has made that pretty clear. There's no way. There's no right way. There's no wrong way. You can't come, period, now. But, and, and, and also, you know, somebody said, you know, somebody said to me about, well, you know, do, do you probably help people that jump the border? Well, let me ask you guys a question. And this is probably the most basic question you can answer in immigration. If you come into this country, if you sneak into this country, other than marrying a U.S. citizen, can you ever legalize your status? No. No. Oh. So, you can apply for no. You can apply for asylum. Asylum, abuse, but not. But if you're a, if you're a crime victim or a rape victim or abuse uh, abuse spouse, you can. There are ways you can do that. Um, but these are here, extreme examples. Nobody extreme. just stops the border yeah. and becomes That's a citizen right. of this country. And it takes a long time. If you do, it takes a long time. Guys, you see exactly what this is all about. Once again, I need for everyone to store the number, dial the number if you need help. Call the attorneys, whether it's immigration or personal injury. Dial this number. The number is 844-774-3529. 844-774-3529. Here's one right here on Facebook here. Laverne Parker says, good morning. I filed for my children, and they did get a date for an interview. But because of the virus, their date was canceled. So my question is now that the ban is on the visa. 
is it going to affect their paperwork, such as their date of medical? Where is the, where is the interview? At USCIS or at the consulate? Mm, I don't know. Laverne, I'll mm -hmm. wait for her feedback. Okay, well, makes, it, makes a difference. Okay. Laverne, um, give us a call. Um, yeah. Easy, easy, easy answer right there. Yeah, not a problem. Once again, the number is 844-774-3529. Laverne, if you want to respond to that question, where is the interview? Would appreciate it so that we can get an answer to your question. But gentlemen, I want to seriously say thanks a lot for doing the show every single weekday. It's great having you guys here helping out a community. We speak about being immigrants. I mean, this is something that will go down in history for many people. And many people will thank you later on when they hear the voice or when they, you know, see the Maverick or when they see the general. Or when they Actually, see you know, squeeze, the squeeze. I'm sorry yeah. to interrupt you. I, I had an idea, you know, when we introduce... Maybe we do this type type of introduction when we do the, uh, the shark. <laughs> and now, here's the man you've all been waiting for. The shark himself, the case handler. There he is. How about something like that going forward? That's good. That's a nice opener. You know, that's a nice <laughs> opener right there. <laughs> Once again, ladies and gentlemen, that's what it's all about, okay? taking care of business, all right? Ladies and gentlemen, store the number. The number is 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. As we wrap it up, um, Laverne Parker says Jamaica. She's going to the consulate, I believe, in Jamaica. That's what she says. All right, there's a, there's a possibility that that appointment, if it hasn't been set yet, could be postponed because American consuls are kind of just about opening up now. So if she's got a date already, great, but there is a possibility that date might be postponed. In addition, if she doesn't have a lawyer, she should come to see us so we can make sure we can prepare them for properly for the interview. Well, also, is it a preference petition? Because uh, she'd be subject to the ban if she is. You know, if it's not a citizen, if, it, if she's not a US citizen applying for a spouse, uh, if it's a permanent resident applying for a family member, they're subject to the ban. Right. And Laverne, all you need to do is just, you know, give the attorneys a call. The consultation is 100% free. So, you, you know, you can talk to them, you know, get some more answers, but call them directly. The number is 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. And also do us a favor. If anyone out there gets hurt, pass them the same number. So this way they can hook up with the shark, AKA the case handler. All right. And his number, once again, is 844-774-3529. Let your friends call. Let them know that you have an excellent attorney friend because we are your friends. They are your friends. I am your friend as a broadcaster. So reach out to us, 844-774-3529. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, we will conclude today's show. Yes, it is an attorney advertisement brought to you by the law firm of Paula Polk, Isaac, and DeSico, PPID. And of course, prior results will not guarantee similar outcome. But ladies and gentlemen, they have proven themselves day in, day out, what it is that they can do in the area of personal injury and immigration law. Call them today at 844-774-3529. Big question here, gentlemen. Friday is a holiday. Are we doing the show? Friday is July 3rd. It's not a holiday. Only well, our president, only our president, it is, only it is our president holiday. thinks it's a holiday. I, I vote yes. They have it as a national holiday. I vote yes, because we need to talk about why this country is so great. And I'm, I'm down for it. So okay. even if it's just you and me, man, let's do it. Okay. Nelson? <laughs> You're dealing with the grill? <laughs> um, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, um, I'm, you know what? I'm in if Conrad's in. I'm in. Okay. <laughs> uh, that's a good thing, you know. Once again, that's it. Ladies and gentlemen, you heard them. They say they're in until Friday when things change up a little. All right. But we're here. All right. So thanks to everyone. Thank you, gentlemen, for being here. Alan, thank you so much for being here and doing what it is that you do. I want everybody to know you're the man with the links, as we say. And thanks a lot for everything. 
But that's I'm it. squeezed. Don't forget, we're doing uh, our late show tomorrow as well. We have our regular yep. show tomorrow with Shira, by the way. Shira is coming on tomorrow to join us. And Thursday, then we have our late show. Yeah. Right. EDT. All right. Thursday, 6 p.m. EDT. So, ladies yep. and gentlemen, check it out right here on Facebook. Spread the word. Every Thursdays, we are on at 6 p.m. And it is a great show. We have a ton of people watching that show. And you never know. Maybe one day it's um, every day at 6 p.m. Hey. You know, um, Adam is like giving me the look, like, oh, what the hell is he? Me? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm, I'm already downloading my American flag background for Zoom. Okay, good, good, good. All right. Thanks, gentlemen. With that said, we conclude, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all for watching. Uh, everyone that's been sharing out there on the um, Facebook platforms, thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe. So this way, once we go live, you will get a notification. Thank you all. Have yourself a blessed day. Bye-bye.